Okay, here we're going to look at uh, the communication between neurons. Because your body has so many neurons, they're all interconnected, it's very important that they are able to communicate and relay signals uh, from one to the other. Now, first off, we have to understand the basic anatomy of a neuron. And we see a prime example of one um, pictured here. We see a highly branched region leading to kind of a central point, leading to this kind of central fiber here, and then another kind of area that branches. Now, the first part here, we call this the dendrites. These are fibers that receive messages from other neurons. They then will take that signal, it will continue down, and we know where the dendrites are located when we see the cell body, which has the nucleus. It's important also to remember that the message will only travel in one direction, starting with the dendrites, going to the cell body, ultimately leading down the axon. What the axon is, is the fiber that sends the message to other neurons. You can see it also branches here at the end. But the signals will only go one way. They go in the dendrites, which is located the area where the cell body is, down the axon, and then will be passed on to other neurons. The passing on that occurs between neurons occurs at the synapse. Now it's important to remember that neurons do not actually touch one another. There's actually a gap between them called the synapse. We see that evident right here. So while it may look like they're touching in these diagrams, they're actually not. There's a synapse there. Now these messages that are going traveling down the axons are sent across the synapse through special chemicals called neurotransmitters. And we see those evident here. They're what's being passed on through this area here, this physical space between our two um, neurons. Keeping in mind that the end here is our axon, and here is our dendrite of our next neuron. Now, the use of neurotransmitters causes an electrical current, and there's actually enough electrical current generated in your brain to power a flashlight, indicating just how many of these um, neurons are being actively fired, and these synapses are actually transmitting these neurotransmitters. You might be familiar with some of our ions that are being transported. Our receptors are very important. Um, that's what's occurring in this region. That synaptic cleft, again, is that physical space between the axon terminal and the dendritic spine here of the next neuron. And neurotransmitters are chemicals responsible for signal transmission between individual neurons. Most neurons make one or more neurotransmitters, which are released at different stimulation frequencies. While 50 or more neurotransmitters have been identified, I'm only going to cover a couple here. And they're classified by their chemical structure and also by their function. And you'll notice here we see the same axon and synaptic cleft and then the dendrite of the next um, neuron. It's important to remember with their neurotransmitters, it's very important we also have receptors here for those neurotransmitters. Now just touching on a couple of the neurotransmitters, uh, as they're, again, they're chemicals that carry nerve impulses across the synapse. Uh, they bind the receptors in a postsynaptic cell, causing chemically gated channels to open. Some you might be initially familiar with are adrenaline. That's kind of your fight or flight response, and they're produced in stressful situations. Dopamine is kind of the pleasure uh, neurotransmitter associated with movement and motivation. And serotonin is the mood neurotransmitter. Uh, it can be associated with well-being and happiness. It also aids in the sleep cycle and digestive system regulation. Gives you a little bit of an idea of how they may look. Initially, they may look very similar, uh, but you can see there's very distinctive differences uh, within some of the binding that occurs between these. So adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin are three. Uh, three other major ones are GABA, and that's the calming or neurotransmitter. Uh, calms the firing of nerves in the central nervous system. Helps improve focus. Low levels can cause anxiety. Uh, acetylcholine is a learning neurotransmitter involved with thought, learning, and memory, something maybe we want a little bit more of. And lastly, just the one that I'm going to cover here of the kind of over 50 possible options is endorphins. And they're the euphoria transmitter. They're, um, they're the ones that are released during exercise and points of excitement, and they can help reduce pain. This is why if you've ever kind of been doing something um, and you're kind of in the heat of battle and you're releasing endorphins and you kind of cut yourself or injure yourself, you may not realize it or feel the full effects of the pain until after, after the endorphin levels have been reduced. Hopefully this gives you a general idea of how neurons communicate.